Okay, AP Chem, we're going to continue on with the ideal gas law. You'll hear some people call it Pivnert. PV equals NRT. The ideal gas law is actually review from first year chemistry, but we can review it further if none of if there's anybody who hasn't learned it. But let's talk about these variables and describe what they are. P stands for pressure. That's the amount of force per area that the molecules are creating when they hit the side of the walls of the container. V is volume. Now, volume is special for gases. The reason volume is special for gases is because a solid has a fixed volume. A liquid takes the volume of the container to a certain level, but maintains a particular volume, whereas gases fill up their containers. So the volume of a gas is really the same thing as the volume of the container. This guy right here is N, that stands for moles. But we're actually gonna list this as the quantity which is measured in moles. So what that means is the amount of stuff that you have is the quantity, and that's N. R is the ideal gas law constant. And for us, that's 0 0.08206 with units of liters and atmospheres on top and moles K on the bottom. That's very important. The units are very important on the ideal gas law co constant because it tells us what units we have to use for the other variables. T in this case is temperature and specifically temperature is very important. So temperature, let's go to our ideal gas law constant and pick out the right units. Temperature has to be measured in Kelvin. The quantity has to be measured in moles. The volume has to be measured in liters and the pressure has to be measured in atmospheres. If you are given quantities that have different units on them, you'll wanna convert them to those units if you have to use the ideal gas law constant. So you practice some problems with that. Let's learn a different type of problem that we can derive from this particular equation to talk about another concept. And this concept, which is also should be review, is density. And density is the amount of matter in a particular volume. And how we measure the quantity of matter for density is in grams. So the formula for density is mass over volume. So that's the amount of stuff in a particular volume of a container. And in this case, it is grams. And usually density is measured in liters or milliliters for the volume. For gases, to use the ideal gas law constant, we're going to stick with liters. So let's rearrange this equation because we've got pressure in atmospheres, volume in liters, quantity in moles, which is going to be what we relate to in mass. So for the density formula, our quantity is used as a mass and for the ideal gas law constant our quantity is used as a mole. So let's talk. We know how to change grams to moles. We know how to change mass to moles. We know how to change moles to mass and how we do this is using the periodic table of the elements. Remember the periodic table of the elements gives us the molar mass. The molar mass is given in grams per mole. So let's relate grams and moles together. The ideal gas law constant 
uses moles and density uses grams. So let's change moles to grams. And how we do that is rearrange this equation so we can substitute moles in there. So grams is equal to the molar mass, which is in grams per moles, times the number of moles, like such. So I can also say that moles is equal to grams divided by molar mass. So I'm going to take the ideal gas law constant, rewrite it here. PV equals nRT. All of this is deriving a density of gases formula that we're going to use later. So I'm going to replace N, which is moles. Remember, quantity is moles. I'm going to replace N with mass over molar mass. So grams over molar mass. I'm going to rearrange my equation so that I have mass over volume, and then I can replace it with density. So let's rearrange this. See how I've got mass in the tops here. So I'm going to get molar mass away from that mass by multiplying each side by molar mass. Now I've got mass. Let's divide each side by density uh, by volume so that we can isolate density here. So this becomes molar mass times pressure equals mass over volume times RT. Remember, mass over volume is density. So let's rearrange and replace. So I'm up here again. Molar mass times pressure is equal to density times the ideal gas law constant times temperature. Now it's really helpful, these formula is what we call the molar mass kitty formula because a good kitty puts dirt over the pea. <clears throat> so my equation now allows me to use the ideal gas law constant to find the identity of a gas based on its molar mass. So the density of a gas is an identifying factor for a particular gas. Each type of gas has a different density and it can be an identifying feature. So here is how we derive the formula for the density of a gas related to its molar mass. And we'll go over what kind of problems we can do with that also. So on the AP exam, the density of a gas might be an issue that um, you're going to be solving for, but they're not going to give you this molar mass um, equals dirt over P formula. It's derived from the ideal gas law formula. <clears throat>